So there are two different types of providers uh, in Terraform or HashiCorp. The remote provider, which is just now I said, the remote provider is the provider for the remote cloud, which you are targeting to provision your infrastructure, such as Google, AWS, or Azure, or any other cloud location, which is remote. But we also have some local providers provisioned by the HashiCorp only. So let's say, for example, to generate the random string or password or time values or anything like that, when you use those providers, basically those interact with the HashiCorp or HashiCorp language and then generates the out outcome based on that. So in that case, when you use the local provider, it doesn't go to the remote location. It just uh, remains within the HashiCorp uh, execution boundary only. So it will not go to the uh, to the outside of, uh, you know, HashiCorp. Let's see how do you declare the provider both local and remote. I'll go back to the Visual Studio code and continue the explanation from there. So this is our Terraform directory which we have created in the previous section. Now here in the main.tf we have created the provider for Azure. So just to revise this, if to declare a provider, you can declare it with the keyword provider and when you define it, you will see the list of providers which has been supported by Terraform. So you can have a provider for external google aws cloudflare or things like that right or even in azure we have azure ad azure rm azure stack these are the three different uh, providers supported by azure so you can define it like that so see how you download the uh, remote provider i call this as a remote provider so i'll call it as a remote provider but you also have as i said in the discussion you could have the providers uh, uh, local providers as well so you can uh, use the local providers like let's say if I create a resource as in a random string for example so if I type a keyword random then I get the end to use the so basically right now we have one provider downloaded in the provider section which is Azure now if I'm going to in run in it so you would see that uh, we have two different folder uh, one for Azure and one for local, I guess. So let's see. So you can see that we have two folders now. One is for Azure RM and it's trying, it has downloaded the latest version available for provider. And we have a provider for random, which is 3.1. Uh, don't be confused with the uh, version of Terraform versus the version of provider because the version of Terraform is the is for uh, you know, uh, running the uh, Azure CLI and its syntax, whereas the version of provider is basically the cloud provider which you are using to uh, provision your infrastructure or configure your infrastructure in Terraform. So let's say if you declare a specific version type uh, for Azure RM, so any uh, attributes or properties uh, supported on that particular specific version, you would be able to use those property if you use uh, let's say backward version of Terraform itself. Let's say uh, I'm using 0.11, 0.12. Then I will be able to use some of those feature. And uh, if I use the new new version, I will be able to use the latest available feature of Terraform. So these are two different things. So people often get confused with with that uh, thing. Okay. By definition, resource block represents your infrastructure in a code, and by reading the uh, resource block definition, Terraform commands uh, makes a decision whether that particular resource requires to create, modify, or destroy. These uh, resource blocks are important. Without a resource block, uh, you would not be able to create anything cloud or in, into any infrastructure. This is a resource block declaration. So you, uh, the way you use the resource block, the type of resource, the name, and then attribute. So this is how you use the resource block. So we have, let's say, providers already created. I'll put it here. You use the keyword resource and then you uh, give the name of the resource. For example, Azure RM, let's say 
resource group i would like to create another resource group for example and then you need to provide the uh, name of uh, instance name basically of the resource group so i'll call this as an rg because i'm going to use, if i'm going to use the same name then it will complain that it's duplicated and then i can create another resource group something like that okay so i can for example i could hard code the value uh, here and when you use uh, the resource block basically the the way you use it uh, like output for example i'm just declaring the output it doesn't mean that uh, you always use it in output but the way you use it is resource type which is this resource type in this case the resource type is this the name of the resource which is this rg okay and then attribute uh, which it could be id for example let's say we would like to get the id uh, another thing is could be let's say location of the resource group or maybe you can declare anything like the entire complex property in the outcome for example if i do that it will get the entire information about this resource blocks it will contain all the information about the resource id location name uh, tags and everything like that okay so you can uh, use the resource attribute like this i hope this is clear uh, let's look at the uh, some of the resource uh, meta attribute metadata attribute of the resources which you can use with the resources so first metadata attributes is the depends on so basically depends on is something what we are saying here is let's say if my one resource is dependent upon the other resource and if i would like to set up a dependency between the resources then i can use the depends on uh, if i'm going to run the plan uh, so what will happen is uh, terraform try to provision both resources parallelly and as we know that uh, we are trying to create application inside in this resource group and when the parallelism happens uh, it might try to create a resource group even before the resource group uh, it might try to create an application inside even before the resource group has provisioned so in that case it will throw an error to so set the dependency what we want so in actual fact what we want here is we would like to set a dependency let's create first resource group and then uh, create the application inside to do that you can do it like depends on and then provide the value of the dependency with this like the name of the dependency I'll call it as an rg and then uh, comma separated value you can give any any other dependency if you have for example if you have any other dependencies which you can use so you can provide the uh, dependency of any other resource type so here what we are saying my resource application resource group name application inside uh, my resource application inside is dependent on this uh, so when actual execution happens the in that execution basically first it will create a resource group and then it will create the application inside change enough to uh, know the dependency by the uh, the, the way you def define the code for example let's say if you, I, I define a code like uh, this for example i have application inside and when i define the code uh, for application inside i'll define it like this uh, my attribute type which is resource group then rg and then name so what i'm saying is i'm using the property of my resource group and using it at name uh, while creating the application inside i'm saying uh, create application inside in this particular resource group name and resource group name is coming from here so the, from the declaration itself terraform understands that this is what the dependency is it requires to create the resource group first and then it uh, the next resource which is application insights so this is uh, anyways declarative by itself we don't need to specify the dependency okay next uh, in the uh, next metadata so using uh, we will call let's say using depends on so in the depends on we have anyways mentioned about the where dot rg name or this now ne next let's look at some of the other thing the other metadata is count so in terraform you can define the count 
count uh, let terraform know that how many uh, instances of the same resource terraform needs to create uh, count represents the number of instances which it needs to or number of time uh, uh, this resource needs to be created for example if i define count equal to let's say one then this particular resource execution or uh, resource block execution will happen one time but if i uh, set the value as in three then uh, and uh, telling my terraform configuration that uh, this needs to be created uh, three time so obviously if i'm it's going to run uh, the same resource group execution three time and it will try to create a resource group name with uh, same uh, name then it will throw an error so usually if you have a such type of requirement then what do you do is you uh, concatenate uh, with some unique name for example uh, you might want to do some formatting around the naming so let's say we'll call it something like that and then count and then index so what will happen now is in this case the name would be rg name or whatever the value is so the value is let's say ins so the name is let's say dev01 ins okay and then once you have it like this, uh, you could have zero, okay? And then let's say when it it will run through the next time, it will create a resource with the name one, two, and three, something like that. So it will create three different resource types. So this is one of, uh, another metadata attribute which you can use with, with Terraform. Next, in the Terraform, we have attribute called life cycle life so in the uh, resource block you can define the life cycle of that particular resource block for example life cycle can be defined with the keyword uh, life cycle and within the life cycle you can define what is the behavior or the life cycle of uh, that particular attribute uh, or a resource block so in the life cycle you have three properties create before destroy what this is mean this means is we are telling terraform to always create this resource before you are destroying the resource and then destroy so create first then destroy okay and ignore changes it means that there are some changes which we uh, or some attribute which we don't want to handle from uh, terraform so in that case uh, we can use the ignore changes and the last one is the prevent destroy it means that if sometime by mistakenly or knowingly or unknowingly if you are trying to destroy your resources then terraform will throw an error that this resource cannot be deleted because you are tagged as in not to be deleted uh, I use the ignore changes a lot uh, in a sense uh, where let's say if uh, for example uh, just a very realistic example my tags are tags for my Azure resources are basically managed through Azure policies for example and now if your Terraform also trying to set the tags from the code and which is also managed by the policies then every time you run the uh, terraform uh, plan and execute your tags are going to be uh, either modified deleted things like that so in such cases you might want to tell your terraform uh, modify everything but don't modify the uh, tags so what you can do here in this case you can say ignore tags so what will happen is it will like, ignore the tag value from the application inside you can always mention uh, the other properties as well for example location things like that so you can uh, here we are saying that this resource block is going to work everything fine apart from these two properties so this resource is not managing basically these two properties anymore okay so this is how uh, you can use the other attributes of your resources you can uh, next one is about let's say next one is about the 
next one is about the for each loop so in terraform you can use the for each and to define a for each you can use it like this so for each basically works on the map or the string value so if when you you have a map or a string value you can use a for each loop to iterate the map or string value uh, or the list type of value to create the uh, number of resources or to manage the number of resources okay one thing about the count is if I set count equal to zero, it means the uh, I'm telling the Terraform to use not to use this particular uh, code block. Uh, the real life example for having the count loop is let's say count equal to zero is let's say if I would like to see if uh, logs requires for example i have a boolean variable called log requires uh, if that variable value is equal to true then i would like to provision the resources for example if that's false then i don't want to provision the uh, this resource itself so this is one of the example where uh, you might say count uh, you want might want to keep the count value as a uh, zero so what will happen if this value uh, is passed as a true then it will create the application inside block if the value is false which is the default value for example then uh, the application inside block will not be created this could be uh, one other example which you can use uh, with count so basically with the help of count you are creating the dynamic resources and you are taking a decision in your code and which is fairly easy now let's uh, think about how do you manage the same kind of a logic in uh, in the arm template it's, it's really difficult whereas in terraform uh, you can see that it's how easy it is to manage any uh, complex conditions here right okay this was about the uh, resources now let's look at some of the other example now let's look at the uh, Terraform data source. Terraform data source basically allows data to be fetched or compute for use elsewhere in the Terraform configuration. What do we mean by this is, let's say you have some uh, data which you would like to read uh, in your Terraform configuration. For example, the infrastructure component which is a uh, provisioned already provisioned if you want to read the properties of that infrastructure component then you use the data source property to read the uh, the data uh, the syntax of that is you use the, to uh, fetch the attribute you use the data dot uh, type of uh, resource then name of the resource and then the attribute let's look at the example right now so let's say for example we have created an application inside so to define a data block use the data block we are going to use data and then name of the resource which is application insight for example and then name ins okay and then you need to define the name for example and then location or maybe resource group name for that's it okay So this is how you declare the variable or the resources. Now you might be wondering uh, how do I know what are the different properties uh, available. So to get the idea about your infrastructure component, you can go to the Terraform website, search, uh, let's say if I'm searching for application insight, for example. Uh, so this is what the uh, Terraform official website, you get the idea about how do you declare the uh, that particular resource and then uh, this is the sample uh, representation how do you create application inside and then uh, the documentation here describe which property is uh, mandatory which is required which one is optional and this is how you can manage the uh, or configure by reading this uh, fairly easy document you can specify your infrastructure component into a Terraform code okay I hope this was helpful now we are going to look at some of the new things in the next chapter